Here's the latest news from the Caucasus neighborhood. Alarming news from the Caucasus this week, as Russia has begun delivering $1 billion worth of arms to Azerbaijan. The weapons include tanks, artillery cannons, and rocket launchers in a deal which the Russian Defense Ministry says it held off on making due to fears it would upset the balance of power in the Caucasus. However, the deal was pushed through at the behest of Russia's powerful arms industry. Armenia's president has warned that Azerbaijan is accumulating a horrendous quantity of arms and that it is threatening Armenia with war. At this week's G8 summit held in Northern Ireland, the presidents of Russia, the United States, and France issued a joint statement on the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, as they have done at past summits. The statement highlighted the inadmissibility of the use of force and war rhetoric, likely directed mostly at Azerbaijan, which is expected to up its war rhetoric ahead of October's presidential elections. Armenian Foreign Minister Edward Nalbandian responded almost immediately that Armenia agrees with the president's joint statement and that a framework for peace must be reached quickly. He referred to past peace summits since 2010 and blamed their successive failures on what he called Baku's attempt to snatch a one-sided advantage. Azerbaijan also voiced its agreement for the G8 statement, albeit with a 24-hour delay. This week, a policy brief was also released on the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, written by Zayur Shiriev of the European Policy Center. He repeats Azerbaijan's policy of advocating more active EU involvement in solving the conflict by replacing France with an EU representative as Minsk Group co-chair, arguing that France may not be totally objective toward Azerbaijan due to its large French-Armenian community. President Ilham Aliyev happens to be on a trip to Brussels to meet with European Union officials. During the visit, he was asked by a reporter about the recent jailing of an opposition leader and of alleged pressure against local media in Azerbaijan. Aliyev responded that not only are none of his political opponents in prison, but that there are no political prisoners in Azerbaijan altogether. Human Rights Watch has stated otherwise, listing at least 22 political activists, journalists, and others who have been convicted since March 2012, 16 of them in this year alone. Meanwhile, Aliyev and the European officials stressed the role Azerbaijan can play in ensuring Europe's energy security, as it could eventually provide over 10% of the EU's energy needs. Armenia continues to figure out what to do in light of Gazprom's decision to significantly raise the price Armenia must pay for natural gas. With few options, Armenia is now considering selling off its national gas supplies company to Gazprom in exchange for the newly raised price to be lowered again. Another offer came from, of all places, Armenia's rival Azerbaijan, which said it would sell Armenia gas in exchange for it relinquishing its claim to the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. It seems with Russia the only option, it is set to increase its leverage over the Armenian state once again. And that's the latest news from the Caucasus neighborhood.